Abraham Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809, in a one-room log cabin on the Sinking Spring Farm in Hardin County, Kentucky. His parents, Thomas and Nancy Lincoln, were pioneers of modest means. From an early age, young Abraham experienced the struggles of frontier life, learning the values of hard work, perseverance, and self-reliance. Lincoln's early years were marked by constant labor on the farm. He helped his father with plowing fields, splitting rails, and tending to crops and livestock. Despite the backbreaking work, Lincoln found solace and escape in books. His mother, Nancy, recognized his thirst for knowledge and encouraged his education as best she could, instilling in him a love for reading. Opportunities for formal schooling were scarce on the frontier, but Lincoln was determined to educate himself. He borrowed books from neighbors and devoured everything he could get his hands on, from the Bible to Shakespeare to law books. This self-directed learning would lay the foundation for his later career as a lawyer and politician. In 1816, the Lincoln family moved to the Indiana Territory, seeking better opportunities and fertile land. The journey was arduous, and the challenges of building a new homestead were immense. Tragically, just two years later, Nancy Lincoln passed away from milk sickness, a devastating loss that deeply affected young Abraham. Despite this heartbreak, Lincoln found a new source of strength and support in his stepmother, Sarah Bush Johnston, whom his father married in 1819. Sarah brought much-needed stability to the household and encouraged Lincoln's intellectual pursuits, providing him with more books and fostering his education. In 1830, the Lincoln family moved again, this time to Illinois. As a young man, Lincoln took on a variety of jobs to support his family, including working as a rail splitter, a store clerk, and a surveyor. These experiences not only honed his work ethic but also gave him a deep understanding of the struggles faced by ordinary Americans. Through his early experiences, Lincoln developed a keen sense of empathy and a commitment to helping others. He became known in the community for his honesty, often settling disputes and lending a hand to neighbors in need. These traits would later earn him the nickname, Honest Abe. Determined to make a greater impact, Lincoln decided to pursue a career in law. He studied diligently, often late into the night, and passed the bar exam in 1836. His legal career began in Springfield, Illinois, where he quickly gained a reputation for his sharp intellect and unwavering integrity. Abraham Lincoln's early life, shaped by hardship and self-education, laid the groundwork for his remarkable journey. From a humble log cabin in Kentucky to the law offices of Springfield, Lincoln's story is a testament to the power of perseverance and the enduring American spirit. Stay with us as we explore the next chapter of his extraordinary life. Inspired by a desire to serve his community and fight for justice, Abraham Lincoln embarked on a legal career that would pave the way for his entry into politics. After moving to Springfield, Illinois, in 1837, Lincoln joined the law firm of John T. Stewart a relative and mentor who had encouraged him to pursue law. Lincoln's legal career quickly flourished. Known for his sharp mind, persuasive skills, and deep sense of fairness, he earned the respect of both his clients and peers. His ability to distill complex legal issues into clear, relatable arguments made him a formidable attorney. Lincoln's work as a circuit lawyer took him across central Illinois, where he traveled extensively on horseback to serve clients in remote communities. This experience deepened his understanding of the diverse challenges faced by ordinary Americans and solidified his reputation as a man of the people. Lincoln's growing prominence as a lawyer naturally led him to the political arena. His first foray into politics came in 1832, when he ran for the Illinois state legislature. Though he lost that initial race, Lincoln's resolve was undeterred. He ran again in 1834 and won, marking the beginning of his political career. As a member of the Illinois State Legislature, Lincoln quickly distinguished himself as a pragmatic and forward-thinking leader. He championed infrastructure improvements, such as the construction of roads and canals, which he believed were essential for economic growth and development. Lincoln's legislative record reflected his deep-seated beliefs in equality and economic opportunity. 
he opposed the expansion of slavery and supported policies that promoted education and economic modernization. These stances aligned with the principles of the Whig Party, to which he belonged at the time. In 1846, Lincoln's political ambitions took him to the national stage when he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. During his single term in Congress, Lincoln continued to voice his opposition to the Mexican-American War, which he viewed as an unjust conflict initiated to expand slaveholding territories. Lincoln's tenure in Congress was marked by his principled stands on contentious issues. He introduced the spot resolutions, challenging President James K. Polk to specify the exact spot where Mexican forces had allegedly attacked American troops, thereby questioning the justification for the war. After his term in Congress, Lincoln returned to Springfield to resume his legal career. Yet, his political ambitions remained undiminished. He continued to stay active in politics, participating in debates and speaking out against the spread of slavery. His unwavering commitment to justice and equality set the stage for his eventual rise to national prominence. Abraham Lincoln's early political career and legal practice laid the foundation for his future leadership. His deep understanding of the law, combined with his commitment to fairness and equality, would prove crucial in the years to come. Join us in the next segment as we explore Lincoln's rise to national fame through the historic Lincoln-Douglas debates. In 1858, Abraham Lincoln's political career reached a pivotal moment when he challenged incumbent Senator Stephen A. Douglas for his seat in the U.S. Senate. This contest led to a series of seven historic debates that captivated the nation and defined the political landscape. The debates took place in seven towns across Illinois. Ottawa, Freeport, Jonesboro, Charleston, Galesburg, Quincy, and Alton. Each location attracted thousands of spectators, eager to hear the two candidates discuss the pressing issues of the day, particularly the expansion of slavery into new territories. At the first debate in Ottawa, Lincoln and Douglas set the stage for their ideological clash. Douglas, a prominent Democrat, championed the doctrine of popular sovereignty which held that the settlers of a territory should decide for themselves whether to permit slavery. In contrast, Lincoln argued passionately against the expansion of slavery. He believed that the nation could not endure permanently half-slave and half-free. His moral conviction was clear. Slavery was fundamentally wrong, and its spread must be halted to preserve the nation's founding principles of liberty and equality. The second debate in Freeport became particularly famous for Lincoln's strategic questioning. He asked Douglas whether the residents of a territory could lawfully exclude slavery before achieving statehood, despite the Supreme Court's Dred Scott decision. Douglas's response, known as the Freeport Doctrine, stated that territories could effectively exclude slavery by failing to enact laws essential for its protection. Douglas's answer attempted to reconcile his support for popular sovereignty with the Dred Scott decision, but it ultimately alienated Southern Democrats while failing to satisfy Northern abolitionists. This response highlighted the deep divisions within the Democratic Party and underscored the complexity of the slavery issue. Throughout the remaining debates, Lincoln and Douglas continued to clash over slavery and its implications for the future of the Union. Lincoln's eloquence and moral clarity resonated with many Northerners, while Douglas's political acumen and defense of popular sovereignty appealed to his base. Lincoln's style was measured and logical, appealing to the audience's sense of justice and morality. He used plain language and powerful metaphors to make his points accessible and relatable. Douglas, on the other hand, was known for his forceful oratory and combative approach, often attacking Lincoln's positions directly. The Lincoln-Douglas debates garnered national attention, with newspapers across the country covering each event extensively. These debates marked the first time that political candidates engaged in such a public and sustained series of discussions, setting a precedent for future political campaigns. Although Lincoln ultimately lost the Senate race to Douglas, the debates elevated his national profile and showcased his ability to articulate the moral arguments against slavery. His performance during these debates laid the groundwork for his successful presidential campaign two years later. The Lincoln-Douglas debates were more than just a political contest, they were a profound exploration of the nation's most pressing moral issue. 
they highlighted the growing sectional divide and set the stage for the monumental challenges that lay ahead. Join us in the next segment as we delve into Lincoln's election as president and the tumultuous events that followed. Abraham Lincoln's presidency was immediately engulfed in the turmoil of the Civil War, a conflict that would become one of the most defining and devastating periods in American history. As commander-in-chief, Lincoln faced the enormous challenge of preserving the Union and ending the rebellion of the Confederate States. Lincoln's leadership during the Civil War was characterized by his hands-on approach and his determination to understand military strategy. Despite having no formal military training, he immersed himself in the complexities of war, often spending long hours poring over maps and military reports. The early years of the war were marked by significant challenges and setbacks for the Union. The First Battle of Bull Run, fought in July 1861, ended in a crushing defeat for Union forces, shaking the North's confidence. However, Lincoln's resolve only strengthened, and he continued to seek capable military leaders who could turn the tide. Finding the right generals was crucial. Lincoln's patience and persistence paid off when he appointed Ulysses S. Grant as General-in-Chief of the Union armies in March 1864. Grant's aggressive tactics and willingness to engage the enemy aligned with Lincoln's strategic vision, leading to a series of critical Union victories. One of Lincoln's most significant actions during the war was the issuance of the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1, 1863. This bold executive order declared that all enslaved people in Confederate-held territory were to be set free. While it did not immediately end slavery, it transformed the character of the war making it a fight for human freedom and justice. The Emancipation Proclamation also allowed for the recruitment of African-American soldiers into the Union Army. Over 180,000 black men enlisted, contributing significantly to the Union's manpower and adding moral strength to the Union cause. Their bravery and dedication further underscored the fight for liberty and equality. In November 1863, Lincoln delivered one of his most famous speeches, the Gettysburg Address, at the dedication of the Soldiers' National Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. In just 272 words, Lincoln eloquently reaffirmed the nation's commitment to the principles of freedom and democracy, stating that, government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Throughout the war, Lincoln's leadership was marked by his steadfast commitment to the Union and his ability to navigate the political and military complexities of the conflict. He faced immense criticism and personal losses, but his unwavering focus on the larger goal of preserving the nation and ending slavery kept him resolute. The tide of the war gradually turned in favor of the Union. Key victories at battles such as Vicksburg and Chattanooga, combined with Sherman's successful march to the sea, weakened the Confederacy. Finally, on April 9, 1865, Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Grant at Appomattox Courthouse, effectively ending the Civil War. Lincoln's leadership during the Civil War preserved the Union and paved the way for the abolition of slavery. His vision and determination were instrumental in navigating the nation through its darkest hours. However, the end of the war also brought new challenges. Join us in the next segment as we explore Lincoln's efforts to heal the nation and his tragic assassination. While the Emancipation Proclamation marked a significant step towards ending slavery, it was not enough to completely abolish the institution. Abraham Lincoln knew that to truly eradicate slavery, a constitutional amendment was necessary. His journey toward achieving this goal would be fraught with challenges, requiring immense political skill and unwavering moral conviction. Lincoln's push for the Thirteenth Amendment, which would permanently abolish slavery throughout the United States, began in earnest after the issuance of the Emancipation Proclamation. He understood that for lasting change, the amendment needed to be passed by Congress and ratified by the states. This would require the support of a two-thirds majority in the House of Representatives, a daunting task given the divided political climate. Lincoln found allies in key abolitionist leaders such as Thaddeus Stevens and Charles Sumner, who were instrumental in galvanizing support within Congress. These leaders worked tirelessly to persuade their colleagues of the moral and practical necessity of ending slavery once and for all. To secure the necessary votes, Lincoln engaged in intense political negotiations, 
leveraging his influence and offering political incentives to wavering lawmakers. He appealed to their sense of justice, the need to unify the nation, and the long-term benefits of a free labor economy. The debates in the House of Representatives were fierce and impassioned. Opponents of the amendment argued that it infringed on states' rights and warned of the societal upheaval that would follow. In contrast, proponents, including Lincoln, argued that slavery was a moral abomination and that its abolition was essential for the nation's integrity and future prosperity. Lincoln's public and private advocacy for the Thirteenth Amendment was relentless. In his annual message to Congress in December 1864, he declared, in a great national crisis like ours, unanimity of action among those seeking a common end is very desirable, almost indispensable. And yet no approach to such unanimity is attainable, unless some deference shall be paid to the views of the minority. He continued to press for the passage of the amendment, viewing it as a critical step toward national reconciliation and justice. After months of intense lobbying and debate, the House of Representatives finally voted on the 13th Amendment on January 31, 1865. The tension was palpable as each vote was cast. When the final tally was announced, 119 in favor, 56 against, the amendment passed with just two votes more than the required two-thirds majority. The chamber erupted in celebration, marking a monumental victory for the abolitionist cause. The Senate had already passed the amendment in April 1864, and now, with the House's approval, the focus shifted to the states. The process of state ratification began, with Lincoln and his allies working diligently to ensure swift approval. By December 6, 1865, enough states had ratified the amendment, and it was officially adopted as part of the Constitution. The adoption of the Thirteenth Amendment was a watershed moment in American history. It marked the end of legalized slavery and represented a profound affirmation of the nation's commitment to liberty and equality. For Lincoln, it was the culmination of a lifelong struggle against injustice and a testament to the power of moral leadership and perseverance. Lincoln's role in the passage of the Thirteenth Amendment underscored his dedication to the principles of freedom and human dignity. However, his work was far from over. The nation now faced the immense challenge of reconstruction and healing the deep wounds left by the Civil War. Join us in the next segment as we explore Lincoln's vision for reconstruction and his tragic assassination that cut his efforts short. With the Civil War drawing to a close and the Thirteenth Amendment abolishing slavery, Abraham Lincoln turned his attention to the monumental task of rebuilding the nation. Reconstruction was not merely about reconstructing buildings and infrastructure but about healing a divided society and integrating millions of newly freed African Americans into the fabric of American life. Lincoln's vision for Reconstruction was rooted in his belief in reconciliation and compassion. He sought to bring the southern states back into the Union as quickly and smoothly as possible, without fostering further resentment or prolonging the conflict. His approach was encapsulated in his second inaugural address, delivered on March 4, 1865. With malice toward none. With charity for all. With firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in. To bind up the nation's wounds. To care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow, and his orphan. To do all which may achieve and cherish a just, and a lasting peace, among ourselves, and with all nations. These words embodied Lincoln's desire for a reconstruction built on forgiveness and unity. Lincoln's proclamation of amnesty and reconstruction, issued in December 1863, outlined his lenient approach. It offered full pardons and restoration of property to all Southerners who took an oath of allegiance to the Union and accepted the end of slavery, excluding only high-ranking Confederate officials and military leaders. Additionally, if 10% of the voting population in a state took this oath, that state could re-establish its government and send representatives to Congress. Several Southern states began to take advantage of Lincoln's 10% plan, starting the process of rejoining the Union. This pragmatic approach aimed to stabilize the South quickly, reduce suffering, and lay the groundwork for a more inclusive society. However, Lincoln's lenient policies faced significant opposition from radical Republicans in Congress. They believed that the South should be more severely punished and that greater protections and rights should be granted to freed African Americans. 
figures like Thaddeus Stevens and Charles Sumner argued for more stringent measures to ensure civil rights and to fundamentally transform Southern society. Despite differing views, significant steps were taken to support newly freed African Americans. The Freedmen's Bureau, established in March 1865, played a crucial role in providing food, housing, education, and legal assistance to former slaves. Lincoln supported the Bureau's mission to help African Americans transition from slavery to freedom and citizenship. In early April 1865, Lincoln made a poignant visit to Richmond, the fallen capital of the Confederacy. Walking through the war-ravaged city, he was met by jubilant freed slaves who hailed him as their liberator. This visit symbolized Lincoln's commitment to healing and rebuilding the South, and his desire to see freed African Americans fully integrated into American society. Lincoln's plans for Reconstruction extended beyond mere political reintegration. He envisioned a society where the rights of all Americans were protected, and where the nation could move forward united in purpose and spirit. His emphasis on education, economic opportunity, and legal equality laid the foundation for what he hoped would be a more just and equitable nation. Abraham Lincoln's vision for Reconstruction was one of healing and hope. He sought to bind the nation's wounds and create a society where liberty and equality were truly upheld. However, his efforts were tragically cut short by his assassination. In the final segment, we will explore the circumstances of Lincoln's death and the enduring impact of his legacy. On the evening of April 14, 1865, just days after the end of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln attended a play at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. The war-weary president sought a rare moment of relaxation with his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, and friends. The night, however, would take a tragic turn. John Wilkes Booth, a well-known actor and Confederate sympathizer, had devised a plan to assassinate Lincoln, believing it would reignite the Southern cause. As the play, Our American Cousin unfolded, Booth slipped into the president's box and fired a single shot at Lincoln's head. Pandemonium erupted in the theater. Booth leapt from the box to the stage, shouting, Sic Semper Tyrannus, thus always to tyrants, and made his escape, despite breaking his leg in the process. The stunned audience and Lincoln's companions quickly realized the gravity of the situation. Lincoln was carried across the street to the Peterson House, where doctors did everything they could to save him. Despite their best efforts, it was clear that the wound was fatal. Surrounded by his family and closest advisors, Abraham Lincoln passed away at 7.22 a.m. on April 15, 1865. News of Lincoln's assassination spread quickly, plunging the nation into deep mourning. People from all walks of life gathered to pay their respects, reflecting on the loss of the man who had guided the country through its darkest hour. Lincoln's body was transported by train from Washington, D.C., to his hometown of Springfield, Illinois, with millions of Americans lining the route to honor their fallen leader. Abraham Lincoln's legacy has endured through the generations. His leadership during the Civil War, his efforts to end slavery, and his vision for a united and just America have cemented his place as one of the nation's greatest presidents. Memorials and monuments across the country stand as testaments to his enduring impact. Lincoln's fight for freedom and equality laid the groundwork for future generations to continue the struggle for civil rights. From the abolition of slavery to the civil rights movement of the 1960s and beyond, his legacy has inspired countless Americans to pursue justice and equality for all. Historians and scholars often reflect on Lincoln's profound influence on American history. His speeches, writings, and actions have been studied and revered, providing insights into his character and the principles he championed. Lincoln's legacy is not just about the past but continues to shape the nation's future. Abraham Lincoln's life and legacy are a testament to the power of leadership, compassion, and unwavering commitment to justice. His journey from a humble log cabin to the White House, his guidance through the Civil War, and his ultimate sacrifice for the nation's unity and freedom make him a towering figure in American history. As we reflect on Lincoln's legacy, we are reminded of his words at Gettysburg, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. 
These words continue to inspire and challenge us to strive for a more perfect union.